in this video, I'm going to explain the concept of a virtual IP address and the virtual router redundancy protocol and hopefully the failover. So if you're interested, stay tuned. So guys, uh, the concept of failover is you have multiple machines and you're always communicated with one machine. But if that machine goes down, you want a way so that the, the, the failed machine will fail over and your system will fail over and goes to another machine to make it the active node so that you don't fail anything and, and uh, essentially you have high availability. That's the goal of this, right? So I'm going to give you an example. Let's say I'm communicating with this web server, for example. This web server talks to some Postgres database on the back end and that database just, or that web server just dies, right? So we want the goal of the virtual IP address is let's have a way to my client to automatically know and communicate to another server and not necessarily know i want this to happen imp uh, just implicitly without me actually interfering that's the trick for high availability and failover and that is done through the concept of virtual ip address so what we're going to do is we're going to assign both these guys the same virtual ip address but since we cannot assign the same virtual IP address or IP address to any any two nodes, you're going to get a conflict, right? We're going to have the idea of a virtual router redundancy protocol. And this protocol is you're going to install the software on, on these two machines and they start communicating with, with each other and they're going to advertise one at a time that the virtual IP address that you create. It doesn't exist. This In this case... I'm going to create a virtual IP address called 10.0.0.100. And that virtual IP address get assigned to the master node with the higher priority. And those guys talk to each other with heartbeats. Say, hey, are you alive? Are you alive? Are you alive? And once one dies, the other node takes over of the responsibility of assigning that virtual IP address and also that new MAC address as well that we're going to generate. So we're going to get a virtual IP address and a virtual MAC address, if you think about it. So let's take an example. So the first thing here, we have a web server and we have a web server. It could be, it could be a load balancer. That's the most common configuration. Both of them are actually layer seven load balancers. And they both have a MAC address, a physical MAC address and a physical IP address. So this AAA and then this one 10.0.0.1. The other guy is BBB and then 10.0.0.2. So what, when those two communicate, when you actually configure those machines and, and the software to do this is called Keep Alive, one software at least called Keep Alive, the way you do it is you create a new virtual IP address and you also create an ID for both machines. It's called Virtual Router ID. So the vi Virtual Router ID, and in this case it's called CC, that's my Virtual ID uh, Router ID, this number is used in to generate the MAC address, th that virtual INA MAC address, which is the international authority. So these numbers always and the MAC address are always the same. And these two, two digits at the end, that's what changed. So if the machine with the higher priority or the master node takes priority, it's going to be assigned the 10.0.0.100, which is the virtual IP address, and also going to assign this physical, uh, this virtual MAC address. So now if any client, which, whether this is outside or inside internally, asks the question, hey, who has the IP address of, uh, who has the IP address of 10 -0 Which MAC address? It's gonna think, all this, obviously is gonna ask everybody, that's a broadcast message. And in this case, this machine will answer automatically, why? because this machine doesn't have the IP address 10 right? So this will answer, and you're going to get this MAC address. Beautiful. That is the most important thing. So now, if there are switches in the middle, the port uh, from which this machine is connected to that switch and that port will know that, hey, any request to that particular MAC, I'm going to take it to this port, like let's say port 1, right? And then I'm going to send a request, obviously. I'm going to create a frame gonna send my get request normally uh make it into a tc packet which turns into a bunch of frames and then communicate normally right so let's throw in a monkey wrench this machine died what will happen if this machine died the backup will stop will say hey 
this master is no longer communicating with me. Something happened. All right, I'm going to call it. I am now the master. I own virtual IP address 10 0 0 100. How did he know? Or how did the machine know? Because it's configured. There's in the software configuration that says, hey, you are now the owner of this. That's the IP address. And as a result, since it has the same virtual I router ID, it's going to have the same MAC address. So I try having different virtual router ID and, and it worked as well uh, the same. So I didn't have any trouble with that. So you can have a different ID and that will generate a different MAC. But it's always better to have the same MAC address in this case with the same virtual ID and for reasons we're going to explain in a minute. So now the moment you assign that virtual IP, right, and assign that MAC, this machine is dead. The, what happens if I don't do anything else? the client will still send the same MAC address, right? Frames with the same MAC address. However, the switches are still dumb in the middle. The switches will still say, hey, uh, this MAC address is actually port one, which goes to this machine. That's bad because we need to let the switches and all other devices know that the MAC address is now coming from this port, port two, let's say. So what it does, it sends an ARP, a broadcast message, I forgot what it's called. And then network engineer, please correct me if I said anything stupid or wrong. You, you guys doing great job at this anyway. Yeah, yeah, you correct me all the time. I love it. So what will happen here is we'll broadcast and say, hey, I am I I own this MAC address now and I own this virtual IP address. So it's just an IP address to them. It's not virtual, it doesn't know that virtual. And now the client machine will also now send, it will update its table so that it's, well, it's the same MAC address, essentially, so it doesn't really need to update anything. But now the client will send a request and automatically the switches will deliver this the frames to that machine instead. That is the beauty. The client have zero knowledge that this happened. This is the beauty. The beauty. Always in computer science and network engineering and software engineering, we'd like to do coupling, decouple everything. So the idea of virtual IP address works exactly like this. And this is enabled by the virtual router redundancy protocol, which we just explained. Thank you so much, guys. Let me know in the comment section if I missed anything. Love you so much. Thank you, everybody, for correcting me all my mistakes in the past or previous video. I'm going to see you on the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.